I think Bitcoin is the best way to kind of consider it is it's insurance for whether or not the fiat currency ends up imploding because of infl hyperinflation. Uh, so it's a way you can have, like if you're a millionaire, billionaire, and you need a place to store your money that's outside of the system in case that were to ever happen where we have a financial collapse, then in my opinion from like my research, I think Bitcoin's the best option for that. And so when you look at it in terms of like, okay, where's the big money gonna be put into? Uh, people like us every day can ride that wave when the financial system starts to have more risk involved as they print more and more money. And then that money starts to flow into more of the digital space. And I wouldn't say it's the highest gaining crypto out there. But in my opinion, I think it's the most stable. So what is the right call? And you're going to end up getting pretty high gains anyways because it's riding off the backs of, well, that is the commodity. And so anything else that grows in value, like Ethereum, a polka dot, whatever it may be, is going to increase the price of Bitcoin as well. I'm just, con I don't know if it's a concern or not, but uh, I, don't, I just don't know what will happen if it starts to get flipped where other cryptos starts to be, like, surpass the price of Bitcoin, then what happens after that? Like, it is sort of, like, people you say that, like, money doesn't exist, like, it's not real or anything like that. So you could use anything as a symbol for money. As long as everyone in that network, in that community, deems that that symbol is agreed upon as being something of worth. Yeah. So the intrinsic value of money is when you have scarcity in that ecosystem. So the reason why shells was a problem was because it could get hyperinflated whenever like a foreigner came into the island and brought in more shells. So that you might have started with 100 shells in that ecosystem, but if someone brings in thousands, then it devalues the currency, quote unquote. Uh, so the same thing is happening with fiat currency, is that every time they print more money out, all it's doing is, it's debasing is what they call it. But the um, perk of Bitcoin is it's the first engineered digital currency where there's only going to be a certain number of Bitcoin that can ever be mined. And no other network can bring in more Bitcoins into that ecosystem. The more people that get into the network, the more the price of Bitcoin is going to increase. But it's, again, insurance. It's a safety net away from an established fiat currency. So... When you're buying or investing into Bitcoin, you kind of are betting against the system. The same reason why someone would buy into gold. So you're, you're investing in the properties that make Bitcoin appealing as a sound money currency, which is that there's complete scarcity. You can't introduce more Bitcoin. And then on top of that, you're investing into the possibility that fiat currency hyperinflates and also as more like companies like Tesla or Square start implementing that? Like what if Amazon says that, oh, now we're accepting Bitcoin? And a lot of people in the Bitcoin network think it's reached a point in the network uh, establishment that if we were to have a collapse of some sort, that that would be the prime source of commo digital commodity that people would rush to because it's the most established, the safest place. Uh, I, I kind of try to use the analogy of like a bomb shelter. So you have all these different cryptocurrencies that are outside of the financial system as considered like quote unquote bomb shelters if like we were to have a collapse. So there's other properties uh, that would make like certain bomb shelters different. Like you have Ethereum, Cardano, Polkadot, like all these different types. But in terms of trying to store value, and protect yourself as like a hedge, you would use Bitcoin and like right. from the research that people do, they think that that's the bo best bomb shelter to put your stuff in. Th the issue it becomes though is that like 
Bitcoin's only valuable until everyone says it's valuable. Right. So you you are kind of making this assumption that if there were a collapse, that everyone would want to rush to the safest, like because it's already proven that Bitcoin is the safest right. place to store your value. But the assumption is that people will rush to it, as opposed to other bomb shelters, quote unquote. But other cryptos aren't as good in terms of the store of value because there's more of a centralized force. Like Cardano, you uh, they could, with the, the creator of it, like everyone knows who that person is and they can make changes to that network. Whereas with Bitcoin, it's completely anonymous, more decentralized, and all of the hard code is just set in place and no one can change it. I think all it takes is a big company like Amazon to say that now we accept it and it creates this mass adoption and then like Square the, them coming out with wallets and then like right now the Square is building out an open source platform uh, where they're focused on efforts to build infrastructure that's use that's able to use B Bitcoin in a, in a like a meaningful way right. um, so like that's my when, when I first invested into it, like I was seeing how all these big companies coming out, like MicroStrategy saying that they're investing into it. Like to a certain point, we need those big players to adopt it because it establishes the network even more. And then it gives people more confidence in it and wanting to get into it because it, it does depend on how big the network is, how, how high the price is going to go. But the other interesting thing too is it's not just that the number is going to go up and the price is going to increase. It's about because it's such a scarce commodity, you can use that as a safe haven to get interest on or you can use it as a lending vehicle. So you can get a loan and use Bitcoin as collateral to go buy a house. I think it depends on which one you want to buy because there is different processes. Yeah, to yeah. So like with Dogecoin, you could get it on Robinhood, which I don't suggest because you don't actually own the Dogecoin. You're basically buying like a security of some sort that's like linked to Dogecoin, but Robinhood owns it. So you just own like a issuance of it. Um, but if you want to own like the actual Dogecoin itself, I think Coinbase allows you now. Oh, okay. It was very recent, but you can buy it off there. Um, you can buy like Cardano, Polkadot, straight off of Coinbase. Okay. But I think, yeah, um, initially, if you already have a Coinbase wallet, uh, go and check like which coins you want to buy, and you can check to see whether or not it's traded on that exchange. And it'll say like if it's not. And then if it's not, then you have to go through that whole process to get the, like, the buying thing. To get the Uniswap thing. And what is Uniswap? Is that one of the coins? Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah, they're both exchanges. They just offer different coins you can get. Um, so to like give you the functional knowledge, if if you can't get a coin on Coinbase, probably the best way to get it is um, you'll buy Ethereum. You'll buy Ethereum on Coinbase. And then you transfer Ethereum to what they call a MetaMask wallet, which is essentially like a wallet that's in the Ethereum ecosystem. So Meta Mask. Yeah, MetaMask, and the logo is like a fox of some sort. Oh, so the MetaMask is that thing. Yeah, okay. and you can either get it on an app or you can link it uh, through Google Chrome as like a plugin. But just Google MetaMask, and that, that's your wallet where you're transferring Ethereum from Coinbase into. So then you can use your MetaMask wallet to go to Uniswap to buy, to exchange Ethereum for whatever altcoin you want. Yeah, I mean, it's very complicated. Or what I'm doing is just buying Ethereum because I know that if people want all these alts, they have to buy Ethereum. So that's like the whole idea of the network effect. It's better to just buy the direct source. Right, right. Hmm. I'm doing the same. Like, I have the long-term stuff. I put in like 60, 70 percent, 
and then the 20 10 percent i just put into like the short term stuff it's like fuck around money yeah. um because there's huge gains to be made in the short term and then you just transfer that money back into bitcoin or ethereum into your longer plays yeah, and it's, like, for me, I, I like the process of researching all this stuff, so, like, I don't really see his work. 